Hello. Recently, um, I mean, it's a common practice, something I've done all my life or all my existence in this world. I, uh, I go through my files, you know, in my computer system, my organic computer system, and, you know, I'll search for keywords and I'll pull out files to get rid of or to investigate further or I'll just delve into what I've accumulated on that file. And I've been, you know, searching for myself. And this idea of seeking myself versus having no need to seek myself. Because I have this idea uh, within myself about I, uh, I've already completed my task as far as finding myself is concerned. It's simply, you know, catching up to me um, because of the momentum of that momentous moment was um, I don't know how to describe it because I view myself completely aware of my completeness in the future even though from that perspective I am completely aware now however I am not aware of this awareness at this point and I contemplate, you know, how can I, or how does one self-create or allow self-creation in a way that is best for all, in a way that actually accomplishes life? Um, and it's a fascinating point because I came to some some conclusions that I um, I don't think I would have read in a book anywhere so to speak for example I was considering the idea of life and death and you know last will and testament and things like this and the idea that a will or a testament is not valid or um, applied until after someone has died and that person only needs to die once in order for it to be applicable forever and of course the Old Testament being the last testament because it is um, death and so the last will and testament is always based on death and the new testament would be the first testament and the testament based on life because life always comes first otherwise there is no death and then I began to contemplate some of the destiny interviews and in particular talking about the king who lived on the planet and then you know just disappeared and before then Everybody just stayed on their own planet, and the people of this planet, you know, what do we do? This has never happened. There's always been the air apparent right after, you know, the past king disappeared. And although it may be described, and I missed it, I don't remember. However, the idea of this king, um, I always think of the Earth. Uh, I think it's mentioned he was a sound planet king, but I don't remember. But at any rate, he died, or, you know, he ceased to exist as he was. And the idea of the Destiny interview with the, uh, the tree being cut up and then burnt, and it's still a tree and all that, I began to put them together, and for example, I would consider the point where a person dies, and they go into the ground, and because you know the earth and the human physical body and all the creatures on it are made up of practically the same thing um, it is very easily assimilated back into the earth and then that which is assimilated into the earth uh, is eaten by worms is turned into grass 
and then birds will eat the worms, and other creatures will eat the worms, and um, creatures like cows will eat the grass, and then, you know, um, a snake may eat the bird, and then a bird may eat the snake, and then a human eats the cow, and all the while, this flesh is becoming one with the flesh that consumes it. And so, going back to the king who disappeared, it only takes one death to ultimately accumulate into everything. Um, and that to me is what happened. You know, I'm not saying he knew that would happen, but I think he had a good idea. Or at least he wanted to find out if it was actually worth continuing. Because if one does not continue, there is no point in continuing. And so, the zero point was achieved because that is the accumulation effect of everything. Um, you know, negative infinity builds up to zero, positive infinity breaks down to zero, and eventually comes back to zero. And this idea of the negative infinity being the past and the positive infinity being the future is there is no more past and there is no more future. And that would be the completeness. This sort of, I would call it emptiness, for lack of a better term, moving, or perhaps... It is hard to say because this point is without time and there's impossible, or at least I do not know how to describe physical movement without physical time. But that is the point to me that I have reached. Um, and this idea that, you know, my future self is still in the future. I call it, you know, um, my most self, um, with the idea of the Arabic idea as they describe Allah, and you know, he's the most gracious and whatnot, and most is used for lack of a better term, and I would say that because of my position in the future, you know, which is the present to myself, and this is the past to myself in the future. Excuse me. And that future self, which is my whole and complete self, is my actual basis. The base, the sound, may come and reach me because we have that connection. Or I have that connection. And interestingly enough, um, my base seeks to ensure certain things. And it is, um, I don't know if anybody else has ever had this experience, but there are just certain things. And it, I would not call it pre programming either because. Pre-programming to me is unquestionable from the person living out the pre-programming perspective. But I struggle with this and it would not feel this urgent. And I'm not talking about feelings and emotions. I'm talking about actual sensations like I feel the sound. I touch the sound. And... It would not be silent if I was not doing what I am doing in the future. So, I would not consider it a point of schizophrenia or hearing voices or anything because it's, for one thing, it's not the sound that you hear with these ears. It's a silence that arrives and through the pressure and the interaction, I, I simply I'm aware. And against my better judgment, I 
press myself to continue seeking interaction with destiny. And, you know, I would call that my most judgment. And it's interesting that I would even say those at Destiny would say, do not listen to that. Um, you know, they might call it possession or they might call it um, mental health. Um, I don't know, mental health uh, issue. But despite all that, you know, I have to be true to myself. And I'd much rather have nothing to be, I would say, insecure about. Because when I deliberately deny myself or prolong accepting myself, I'm insecure and I began to look at everything as against me or um, when it's, you know, me as myself against me. And you know, all is one is equal. Yes, everything is against me when I'm against myself. And another point that my, from my perspective, my present self tells, or, you know, directs myself is to the point of continuing what I call the naked vlogging. And, you know, maybe a number of factors, but the point I always come back to is uh, the man who was preparing for a wedding and he went and sent his servant and said, okay, go get my guests, it's time. And, you know, the rich man said, no, I just bought something. Another man said, you know, I've got to go take care of my oxen. And, and you know, there was a, every guest he had invited denied him. And the servant came back and told him this. And he said, really? Well, go out and get anybody you can. It doesn't matter where they are or who they are. I'm going to have a full house. And so he went out into the streets and he got the homeless and the hungry and the depraved and, you know, as Jesus would call them, uh, the tax collectors and sinners. And so that is what I do. I post a vlog to the downtrodden of society or a certain segment because... Uh, This world is, at least as far as I know how, I'm not able to reach every segment of society. And so, one segment at a time. And so, I've made two videos. And of those two videos, I've had almost 11,000 views. Um, and I've got... 30 comments, you know, support. Sometimes, you know, not everybody liked what I had to say, and that's okay. I, I prefer that as long as there is division, that division um, expose itself. And... Of the... 104 videos I posted on YouTube, I've had 1,753 views. And I would say practically no outside support. Um, no one saying, I mean, there's been a few, I'm not saying no one, but practically anyone who views my videos does not like it or dislike it. And if they do, I would much prefer that they leave a comment as to what they liked or what they did not like. Um, but no one just saying good idea, good point, anything like that. And I'm not looking for lip service. I'm because I myself consider them to be good points. Otherwise, I would not post them because I do not want to dishonor myself. 
And if they're bad points, let me know, you know, specifically, so that I can face these things and, uh, you know, get down to the nitty gritty. I don't like to just skim over things uh, when I'm trying to dig deeper. That's just, you know, counterproductive. Virus database has been updated. In further investigation into myself, I always come to the point of, you know, human acceptance, human interaction, group. And I've just never been a group person. No matter how much I've wanted it, I've just never been able to conform myself to a group of any kind. You know, I've I tried, especially in you know school, high school. I tried to be like other people, and I understand that in a group there is certain. Um, give and take, I guess, where, you know, you have to accept that as a group, this is not what is done and this is what is done. And even just in general society, one has to accept that there are certain things one does not do to other people. Um, things like that, you know, there are certain boundaries that are set upon a group that are not set upon an individual. And you know, I have no problem placing limits on myself because you know, obviously, I accept and allow gravity to exist for me. I accept and allow um, food to be part of my existence. I accept and allow sleep to be part of my existence. I accept and allow some things are better left unsaid to be part of my existence. And what I want from a group is to have as little limitations as possible so that I can say anything, even if it is off the wall. I'm not talking about offense. But if I say something, for example, that is, <clears throat> I would say, unacceptable. You know, it goes against a certain person's credo. I would at least want to be heard. Um, because when mixing with other entities, I expect some sort of reaction, I guess. And I don't consider that bad. I simply consider it, you know, they are someone else. And considering, you know, my experience with humans, um, how I treat humans and how humans treat me and how humans treat themselves and the world and the creatures and stuff, I, it surprises me that I continue to seek a group. And I contemplate this and I wonder, you know, why? Why would I do this? And the answer I have come up with is... I set myself up <clears throat> to be this way on purpose. So that the past is gone and is unrepeatable. I have set myself up so that, and I recognize this <clears throat> often, that I do not share myself on purpose because there's no one to share myself with except my roommate and my dog.
You know, there may be five or six days in a row where they are the only creatures I see um, and interact with. And if my roommate is gone on a trip, it's just me and the dog. And I don't have much group experience. And in this town, I, uh, would say I somewhat ruined my chances of being accepted because of a choice I made, but that is fine because I am okay with the choice. But this idea that I'm holding myself back on purpose in order that I may share myself with others um, is a point that both excites me and bothers me um, because for example it excites me because I I know what's there to share and it excites me because I know the potential for others being able to accept what I have to offer is there but it bothers me because I have to wait. I have to wait on the group to come together in order to ensure that there is no more <clears throat> single control or you know domination. <clears throat> and this brings me back to the point of the king who died or who disappeared, whatever, <clears throat> and how to create oneself. And the way I have found is through randomness that is without control. And the only way <clears throat> I can be sure it is me is if it happens randomly. That is, I did not force the issue. I did not um, force a choice. I don't blackmail. I don't, you know, coerce or anything like that. It would have to be random and totally from within, one might say. So that is how I, I accumulate myself. From myself. Because <clears throat> through the randomness, I am sure it is me. Because only me would know, you know, what I, I have been thinking or considering or uh, practicing or, and then to have a um, quote unquote unconnected party to talk on these things or to, you know, do something that shows whether, you know, it's an unconscious awareness or something that I have been doing these things. And that, to me, is me. Where the zero point is the lowest point. Where, you know, as I say, all rivers flow into the ocean, into the sea. And that, to me, is why I accept and allow a a group situation for me to exist. Um, you know, I, I don't have good memories of groups. I don't have um, experience with groups. I, I just don't. And so I, I don't fit in naturally. And I find that okay because like everything, there's a learning curve. There is this point, the grace period, if you will, where yes, um, I may offend a member of the group or the whole group, but rarely is it done on purpose. I will admit, I do like to stir up strife. I do, I like to stir the pot and watch it bubble and just sit back and kind of chuckle to myself thinking that was easy. 
Um, however, this is one of those points that I want to face in the group where I will actually have to come to terms with my interaction. Um, being here talking to a video camera is not giving me that opportunity. I simply get to confess it, but I don't get to practice it. Um, I can apply it to myself so that I don't stir up strife within myself. But sometimes I find it useful because if I didn't stir my own pot, no one else really does. You know, humans prefer not to disturb things unless they love drama and whatnot. But and most people do have this penchant for drama in other people. But when it comes to them, it's just it's always the world of, against them. Also say, <clears throat> excuse me. I, uh, I, I use my sneakiness in that way. I find myself saying things, and then you know, within myself, I will be like, hmm. I know exactly what I'm doing. And so I, I prefer not to do that. I prefer not to say that to myself. I don't want to be sneaky. The only reason I sneak around is because all the secrets are secret. Um, and anyone going around looking for secrets is usually deemed a threat. And threats have to be dealt with. And so I'd rather not be dealt with. And so I continue trying to move around in the shadows. But I want that to stop as well. I mean, the only reason I seek out secrets is to expose them. And so concealing myself is counterproductive. I am definitely one vote for full exposure. Um, you know, I don't agree with... secrets. Um, it's a personal issue because, you know, it's a feeling of being left out and insecure that I am not counted worthy to know something. And, you know, I want to know everything. And I want other people to know everything as well. And yes, the idea of having gods equal to me is somewhat of a blessing and a curse to me because for one, I'll finally have some equals to interact with. But on the other hand, I will have some equals to interact with. And knowing myself, sometimes I do not consider that such a good thing. And so I work on myself to ensure that the self that is complete is completely complete and not... Um, covering anything up, or pretending, or anything like that, because that is what I do. I put on a face to make my human existence more human, more bearable. Um, and I don't want to do that. You know, I do not want to have to do that. And the only place I actually feel open is when I'm outside or when I'm alone. And again, this is where the group comes in because it, the group naturally provides a reflection of yourself. And so, having that point where 
I can look at myself through other people. It just helps me understand, you know, the bigger picture. If I had the money, I would join the Destiny I process. Maybe. Um, I say maybe because if it truly is what is best for all, I think it should be given away for free no matter what. Um, otherwise, it is for people with money and the so-called elite. And as I am one of the members of society that earns less than $2 a day, I do not have the ability to participate in those things that require money. But the idea of being in debt, I call it cost, um, you know, what is the cost of joining or not joining? What? Um, feeling like I owe it to people to do certain things. You know, that is part of the debt system and it is a way to be enslaved by money without actually having, you know, the physical paper called money. So sometimes I just don't understand what I'm supposed to do. I was watching a video and um, a man described the differences between currency and money. <clears throat> and I'd like to share that. Uh, the Conditions of currency is it must be divisible, a medium of exchange, a unit of account, portable, durable, and something called fungible. And fungible, he says, is the dollar I have in my pocket is equal to the dollar you have in your pocket. That is currency. And that is what the world has. Um, he said no one in the world uses money. Money is all of those six things medium of exchange, unit of account, portable, durable, divisible, and fungible. Plus, it must have a store of value over long periods of time. And obviously, the currency system has no store of value over a long period of time. For one, because it's based on nothing. And two, um, the system that creates it and allows it is unsustainable. And this man, he pointed out, You know, every 30 to 40 years, there is a new fiscal policy. And um, it always comes on the back of, you know, financial crisis and whatnot. And another man pointed out that there was first um, you know, currency wars and trade wars, and they lead to world wars. And he says this, that is what is on its way. I prefer it not to be that way. But I'm just one man, one vote. And speaking of voting, the idea of having everyone having access to the vote is a completely perfect idea. Um, and I would not just use it for politics, I would use it as the jury system in society where um, crimes are published in newspapers with the details or there are certain, the evidence is in a central place where people can go investigate it or the accounts, the testimonies are sent to individuals at their house and then they are allowed to vote, you know, guilty or not guilty. and. I just see it as a more informed society and a bringing back of the press as the informer as opposed to, you know, the detractor or the misinformer.
And I consider this idea of money not actually talking about, you know, what is called money, coins, and paper. And when I say money, I say, um, I, I, I'm talking about Christ. Because money to me sounds like money, um, my manna, um, you know, the living bread, um, the bread of life. my man, you know. That is what I hear. And to say money is in the hands of the elite, um, you know, I can accept that and understanding that although I may be poor in terms of this world, I am a man with money, um, you know, puts me in a certain position to say, what do I do with it? And it always comes back to, do not cast pearls before swine, nor give that which is holy unto dogs. And there's a lot of swine, and there's a lot of dogs out there. And so I keep it to myself. And people don't ask. You know, I don't know if it's because I don't portray myself as, you know, having the answer. Or people do not perceive me to have the answer, or they just don't care, or they perceive themselves to have the answer. I, I don't know, because I, that's how I've always wanted to share, is through people asking questions. Because I don't like to just start up talking. You know, I unless I'm asked to do something, especially speak, I prefer not to speak. And something else that was said through a Destiny interview has risen questions within me. For example, uh, the statement was made, you have the will, we have the answer. Okay. This brings up the idea of the channelings I experienced with my girlfriend because I was told that there was papers or, you know, instructions left by me before I came to this planet. And what they said I was not told. Um, I was told, you know, as I progressed, more would be revealed. And I began to contemplate, and to me that represented the will. You know, my last will and testament. That is, that part of me no longer exists. And also in saying, I have the will and you have the answers, is saying, you do not have the will. Um, and the question arises, why is that? And this is one of those points where I was thinking, yeah, I got them now. But at the same time, I don't have the answers. Um, and so I pushed through the point and I forgive myself for accepting, allowing myself to use points to manipulate or try and extract certain reactions and things to bolster myself, to make myself look better. And I don't like that. So, you know, I stop that. I quit that. And to prove that, I still share. You know, concealment is the first evidence of shame. And since I do not have shame, and I will admit anything to myself if I am able. I share with you. And so, to ask you, do you not have the will to do it yourself? Are you not capable of having the will? And if you consider yourself to have the answers, you must also consider yourself to have the questions. Um, do you consider all other questions irrelevant? that you do not ask. And I have this point within myself where I am afraid to approach people because of the cost. You know, what is it going to cost me to say something? Um, but I must also move past that point. I must move beyond the idea that of fear of loss. 
And so I share this so that I may, you know, at least myself move through it and move beyond it. And some other question I came up with was, what is the point of points? Um, is there ever an end to the point? That is, points are used as um, process. They're used as, you know, stepping stones. And it, why was the point created in the first place? What is the point of points? And I don't necessarily have the answer other than the original was using them to ensure that the self created self remained self. Um, because of course the original knew what it was capable of, what it is capable of. And these points are always points of limitation. And they're saying, here I am. And other than, you know, wanting to rein oneself in and to ensure that the end result is the first result, the point came about. I am dissatisfied with a lot of things. But, you know, that's nothing special. Um, I do I enjoy the idea of being special. Because, you know, I've been told I'm special all of my existence. And I believe it. To a certain extent, I believe my expression is special. Um, I don't seek to sound proud at this point. I simply recognize the fact that there are unique circumstances surrounding me and my existence and my self-expression that you know even if my self-expression is deplorable there's simply no one else like me um, and that is another thing that has just bothered me you know why do I have to be alone in self-expression um, and this is where the group comes in again where and why I consider the individual important because the individual will last you know as a self-aware entity whether they're aware of it or not the entity will last beyond the group you know the group for example destiny may dissolve tomorrow and that will not dissolve the entities that were in destiny it will simply remove a certain label from their existence that they've accepted and allowed themselves to be labeled as. And if they identify themselves solely as a Destinian, then yes, they will cease to exist. Which, to me, is against the idea of a group. Where each individual or each member of the group is meant to last. And therefore, even if the group changes name, or evolve somehow, the idea of the group lasts. And I find the individual very important and important to me because my individualism is important to me because it's the only thing that's really been, you know, constant in my existence. And that is a point that I has caused me so much pain and suffering, you know, probably mental pain and suffering and manifesting as physical pain and suffering and 
also great joy, um, just satisfaction that I can resist anything by simply not resisting myself. And I find this very satisfying that I'm willing to accept um, what I might call negative consequences because I just accept myself and that is something I want to see in everyone. And then you cannot move beyond yourself if you do not accept yourself. And admitting yourself to others is, you know, admitting it to yourself. And so, I, I don't really understand what this place is about sometimes. I just feel at a loss. That I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. And I just don't know what to do sometimes. And I do not feel I have a confidant or a mentor or anything other than myself to ask. Um, and that is tough as well. But it is also one of the repercussions of all oneness. Which is another reason why I prefer to stay silent and allow randomness to come to me. So that I know it is me answering myself. And as far as the point of changing the mind, one might consider the mind less than the physical and less than the entity that the physical reflects and reflects the physical um, because one might say the flesh changes but it does not in the long run uh, and the entity does not change and yet the mind does. <clears throat> so to me the point of accepting and allowing the mind to exist all as one is equal is to get the mind not to change. And so the point of changing the mind is to not change the mind. And one point I found within myself was getting my mind to love itself as itself, that is to accept itself for itself and to understand its limitations and its um, pros and cons. And in this, the mind does not change. And so using that to build it up to a point of equality and not a point of deprivation is the benefits of having a physical human body and an entity one and equal because it gives it a basis, a, you know, a standard on which to stand. And so I would consider myself changing my mind into something that does not change. And if that is no longer mind, the mind accepts that because it accepts the idea of namelessness. And this is one reason why I speak the way I do. Um, I use the language I use, which I'm speaking of pictures, because it is the language of the mind. And I understand it is the mind that is the problem. Um, and therefore, the mind is the solution. And so. I work within myself to create a oneness and an equality within myself and you know I, it's a process I don't get it right every time um, I do still conceal things for myself both for um, you know future reference and both for um, self-delusion and so these are points I must face but I am facing these points because 
I look into the mind as a system that is not beatable but joinable. And to me that is what life is about. It's not a competition. It's about using what is here for life. And if the non-changing mind is no mind, the idea of the mind accepts that. And that is why the mind is changing. Okay. Um, also, I'd like to speak on communism, where um, when I say communism, I do not refer to Marxism. I refer to communism, living in a commune, and everything being communally the communities. And the message of Jesus was implemented through a communistic society. It is written, at least, that immediately after the resurrection and ascension, um, you know, the apostles were left on their own, and the society they developed was communistic. All the money went into one pot, and it was used for what was best for all. However, the system did not last. Um, it doesn't really say how or why or when it ended, but it is obvious it didn't last long. But that doesn't mean the idea of it is wrong to me. Um, anybody can live in a community. And I think most people would prefer to live in some form of community, even if it's you know, a collection of houses that have maybe a mile or two in between them. It's still the idea that we help each other out I can rely on you, you can rely on me. And I do not say that in a term of lying as falsity, I refer to it as laying down. You know, I can lay down and rest when you're in my company. I don't have to be on my guard all the time when I'm with you. Therefore, I rely on you and you rely on me, knowing you don't have to watch your own back when you're with me. Okay. I'm going to write some different self-forgiveness on my blog today because I had this inspiration of I forgive my neighbor as myself for accepting allowing myself to be jealous. You know, I forgive my neighbor as myself to, for accepting allowing myself to become envious. Things like this. It is one plus one equals two, if you will. 